about. So we have seen that for ultrasound imaging, one is caught between two desires, the desire to have a high frequency and the desire to have low attenuation, that is a low frequency. So there must be, for an application, an optimal frequency. And this is what we're going to address here. So we have, when we have increased resolution, we have decreased signal-to-noise ratio because we have attenuation. So delta x, we have seen increase, decreases with increasing frequency. So the resolution goes inversely proportional to the frequency. I mean, the, the delta x. So the resolution, we can say, increases with frequency. Signal-to-noise ratio, that is the attenuation, is given by the attenuation equation that we used before, that I introduced earlier. And then we have, of course, the reflection coefficient here. OK, so that is the signal that's returned from an echo generating interface. Just note here, we've got 2x and the factor k I forgot to put in here. I'll have to um, change that. That's the conversion factor between decibels and the exponent. So. OK, so the reflection coefficient as a function of frequency is constant. F is the ultrasound frequency. And I will come back to what I introduced last week, this kind of um, behavior analysis on when is the optimal choice of our experimental parameter. And F, the ultrasound frequency, is the experimental parameter. That's the parameter that one, as an experimenter, can choose, 1 to 20 megahertz or whatever. Alpha is the attenuation coefficient. That's the tissue property parameter. That's the one we cannot change. That's the one that's given by the subject under investigation. So now the question is, one would like to increase the frequency, but one would like to decrease this term here. And so there must be a choice, an optimal between the two. And the idea now here is we're going to take the signal that we want to maximize and the frequency that we want to maximize. So let's maximize the product of the two. OK, now you could say, why are you maximizing f times s and not f squared times s or so? Because I can. It's arbitrary. But you can actually go through the calculation and ask the question, what if I give more weight to the resolution and I maximize f squared times s? And you'll find very similar behavior. OK, so now we want to see um, where is the maximum where the derivative with respect to the frequency is 0. That's the maximum, the best frequency we, do, uh, we choose. So we multiply f times s. s is a function of these parameters. And then take the derivative with respect to the frequency. Here is the constant sort uh, taken out. We have the derivative of this guy here. And so we're just going to have to look at the derivative of this. We'll spare ourselves the details here. But here is what we get. The exponent says in both expressions, we've got something in brackets that we can set to 0, which is nice. So we're finding the optimal frequency is given by 1 over 2 times the attenuation coefficient and the distance of the object with respect to the transducer. The 2 is, of course, because it travels back and forth. OK, so the frequency, the less attenuation we have, the higher the frequency can be chosen. That's the right behavior. The further away the object is, the lower the frequency has to be because one has to have less attenuation. And the further the object is away, the more attenuation one has. So this result makes intuitive sense. So that's what I just said. The optimal frequency decreases with tissue depth and increases with increasing absorption. So let's look at this function, and let's see how critical this choice of f0 is. And I'm going to pretend here the experiment has chosen a certain f0. And the question is now, how much an error can one allow oneself in knowing what is the attenuation coefficient and the depth? And so what I've plotted here is this function here as a function of f alpha 2x. 
and this gives us this curve here. This actually looks very similar to what we've seen last week, and you'll notice actually the, uh, it's an exponent that's involved. Here's the optimum. This is a normalized to one, so at the optimum, I set this equation to one. That's just scaling. And now you can see here, we got a certain variation within 80%, and if one decides, I'm okay if my signal is attenuated by 20%, then if I still receive 80% of the signal, I'm still happy with that, and that gives us now the range of frequencies that one can accept. So if the change in F times S is less than 20%, one gets a fourfold range of frequency. So the good news is, if the distance varies by a factor of two, you can still use the same frequency, or if the attenuation coefficient va varies by a factor of two, you can still use the same optimal frequency for a given distance. Okay, so now let's look at some examples that illustrate the principle. So the first one is a skin ultrasound, very high resolution. This is, you know, that's the problem with ultrasound. You have to know what you're looking at, which is kind of circular as far as, far as I'm concerned. But what you see here is the epidermis. That's the surface. You have loose connective tissue and subcutaneous fat. That's the next layer. Then here, that's the muscle fat interface. This is striated muscle, muscle fibers interface. You can actually see here the individual muscle fibers. It's so high resolution. And then down here, one has the bone. So that's very high resolution if you can see the individual fibers. But if you want to look at liver metastasis, which are many centimeters away in the human liver. The liver has about a weight of one and a half kilos, so you can estimate the size from this. You see the metastasis. There is no chance that you would ever have this kind of resolution for this scan. So here the frequency was low, and here the frequency was very high. 